Hi everybody, it's Kelly with Pookie and Bell, and it's been a really long time. It's been two months since I've made a video. And actually not because I'm lazy. It was um, our house flooded and we had a remodel that finally started. It flooded in August of last year and the construction finally started after negotiating with State Farm and COVID and all of that fun stuff. Construction started and the rebuild started in December and ended in uh, February. So our house is finally put back together and I can get back to work and start making some tutorials. So today I thought what I would do is one of the things I do in my apparel business a lot is make memory bears. I get requests for them all the time and I've made several different types and some are more difficult than others. And then I found a pattern that's two pieces, super quick, easy, large, which people love, and um, takes no time at all to make. So you can pretty much be a beginner sewer when you're making it. And it'll probably take, I would say if it's your first time ever making a memory bear, it'll probably take you a few hours. If you've made them before and you've had like 10 pieces that you're putting together, you're gonna love this pattern because it's gonna take you an hour to do a bear. So um, depending what you charge, that can be a pretty good turnaround um, profit wise for you. So the things that you're going to need, of course, are your shirt from your customer. There's one thing I'm gonna tell you about this pattern that I absolutely love. If you get an extra small women's or if you get a 4X men's shirt, any type of shirt, pajama pants, um, shirts, sweatshirts, dress shirts, flannels, whatever, you can do any of it. It just kind of depends how you prepare the garment, whether you stabilize it or not so it's not super stretchy and kind of moving all over when you're sewing it. So here's the pattern that I use. It's Carol's Zoo. And this pattern, it's called Barrett, and it came with three sizes. So you get a baby bear, a mama bear, let me get this here, a mama bear, and see so there's just two pieces, front and the back, and you cut two of each. And then the one I already have on the shirt that we're going to do today is the Papa Bear. And he's about 14 inches tall. So you're going to need to print your pattern, cut them out. You can also buy her patterns on her site. Um, I'll link it all in the description below. But you can um, purchase it where it's just the single bear. And the single bear is this one right here. So it's just kind of a medium sized bear. Um, I purchased that one as well as the family set of bears because depending on the size of the shirt I get, I can use whichever pattern part, whether it's the baby mama or papa bear, to fit that garment. Um, you'll need some pins, scissors, and I use the Pelon P44F um, lightweight stabilizer. I put this on all the material that I use, whether it's stretchy or not, just to stabilize it, stiffen it up a little bit and make it easier to sew. Um, then you'll need an iron. So you'll take your pattern piece, you're gonna lay it onto the, the garment after you interface it, iron your interfacing on. And the instructions for that are pretty simple if you've um, ever interfaced anything before. You'll just take the interfacing lay it onto the fabric and no steam and just hold it for five, 10 seconds and press that on. And that's just gonna give you a little stiffness to the fabric and no stretch. Then I take my pattern piece and I pin it all the way around and I fold the fabric, like this is the back of a dress shirt. I fold the fabric pretty sides together because sometimes I may not even pin the pattern on. I'll just lay it on here, put one pin in the center, and then I'll trace it all the way around, remove it, and cut it out. Um, but if you're new to this, I would suggest pinning it all the way around to hold it on there and then cut it out. Now you wanna make sure you're not having like pretty side up, pretty side up, because you need two pieces of the back, two pieces of the front. So if you put your pretty sides together like this, if your shirt's big enough to do it. This one we're making the dad size bear. Um, this way, when this cuts out, you're going to have to have opposite pieces. If you don't, 
you're going to have like two left side backs of your bear and then that's going to be a problem. So um, make sure that you've either got the two back sides of the shirt together or the two front sides of the shirt together and then cut it out. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll move over to the table and we'll get these pieces cut out and then we'll get ready to sew. Okay, so here we are. We've got our pattern pinned all the way around onto the shirt and we're going to go ahead and cut it out. so I don't hit that with my needle, I'm just gonna snip it out. Okay, when your shirt's not big enough for the bear that you want, you have to cut a piece out. This is gonna be bigger than my seam allowance that I'm gonna sew, so I won't be able to hide it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little piece of the leftover fabric that I cut off Nothing difficult here at all. I'm going to cut a chunk off of the waist. I'm going to take this piece of fabric and I'm going to lay it right here and I'm going to stitch it on along that same seam that's already in the shirt from the button placard. I'll fold it back and then I will just trim it off. So I have that little bit there and nobody's gonna notice this on the bear when it's finished. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and get started. Okay, so now we are at the sewing machine and I have just general setup here. Um, I'm going to switch out my bobbin because it's almost empty and I don't wanna get interrupted when we're sewing these pieces together. Um, I don't really worry about my color or thread. You can switch it out if you want. White, black, red, whatever. Um, my bobbin is white and I have it at a 2.5 for the stitch length. And we're going to go ahead and get started sewing this. First thing I'm going to do is show you where I'm going to sew in just that little chunk I had to take out for that button. There's a little piece. 
I'm just going to finger press that. And then I'm going to follow our cut from earlier along the pattern. Snip it out. Now, garbage for this. And now when we sew this, these pieces together, the gap is no longer there. There's the gap. Put that piece in, gone, so we have something to sew to. Fold the dart on the front piece and eighth of an inch. There's your dart. And this is for their bum. So when they sit, when the bear is stuffed, he'll be able to sit up straight. Now we're going to match our two front pieces together. Again, you can pin this if you want to. I am not. And sew it almost all the way around. Of course, if you sewed it all the way around, well, you're going to have two front pieces just sewn directly together and that's not going to work. So what I do to remind myself is I bring, sorry the bump camera here, I bring the pattern pieces with me. The pattern pieces will show you where to stitch. So this is the front of the bear. Let me get it in the picture. Here's our dart that we just sewed. We've got our eye, our nose, this is our ear. Okay. And we're going to sew this part, this arm, if you think about it, the bare arm, you're not going to sew your two front arms together. You're going to sew them to the back arm. So this part of the bear is going to be open. You're just going to sew the back part all the way up on this pattern. If I can get you in here, excuse you in here. So this whole back side all the way from the top, that's what you're going to sew. So we're going to do that now. the back pieces you also have up at the top here for the head where it kind of scrunches it across their face really cute you have two more darts that we're going to sew on those pieces you're also going to leave an opening on the back now you can mark this on the pattern I've done so many of them I don't mark it you really don't have to you can kind of see from where the head dips in all the way to the butt I leave an opening about four inches and that gives me enough room to stuff it later um, the smaller the opening it may be if you did this big that's gonna be really difficult to stuff um, although it would give you less hand sewing at the end so up to you here kind of at the top where you put your dart and you want to start sewing towards the back towards the ear right at that point that way when this opens up you have this little flat spot right here and that is what you're gonna have on the front so that it matches up nice
Okay, so after you have your back and your front sewn together, you're going to um, now put the back to the front. A couple things here. So we've got our back opening for stuffing. You're going to notice when you match these up that the ears do not match up perfectly. So in this pattern, um, a lot of her patterns are meant for like fur and stuff. So um, you're going to ease this in and crunch it in and that makes the ears just kind of cup and curve forward on the bear, which is really cute. If you wanted to alter your pattern, um, if that bothers you, you could certainly do that. This is the one part that I pin the bear together and where I pin it is kind of at the main points, the corners where I know that's where I need to be lined up for the bear not to be lopsided or crooked. So I'm going to do that now and just continue around the bear, kind of pinning it together in the corners. And then I'll add some extra pins once I get that done to just help keep me on track when I sew these pieces together. So we'll do that. The feet won't match up exactly either. So I just kind of do my best. I don't stress about this. Just pin it together. Get the points together where you know those are gonna match up exactly. There's nothing you can do wrong with this that you can't fix, um, except cut it wrong. So if you cut it wrong, that could be a problem. But if you get the pattern with the mama baby and papa bear, then you could put a smaller pattern on it um, if you went with the big one and did cut it wrong. If you're wondering, um, as far as what I charge, um, that's up to you what you want to you know charge for your time and your supplies and your batting um, thread needles wear and tear in your machine all that kind of stuff but um, uh, I do not differentiate between size so my baby bear is the same price as my papa bear it is the same amount of work and time involved so I charge the same price no matter what size the bear is and that just keeps it very simple for me and very simple for the client as well okay so i've got this pinned together now i'm just going to kind of pick my spot which i usually start up at an ear i kind of like to get the difficult part out of the way so i'm going to start in the center part focus right here where this pin is and i'm just going to start sewing and then i'm going to ease cram that bigger part of the ear in so that it matches when i get to this point and then carry all the way down and around the bear. So we'll do that now.
you have both sides and right here yep okay so I kind of double check both sides to make sure that I've caught the fabric all the way around on both sides and nothing can pull through and give me a hole in the bear later when we're stuffing because we don't want to have to unstuff it and redo it and everything looks good now at this point um, a lot of people in the curves will snip them um, so that they lay better so I'm going to go ahead and snip my curves now and you can take your scissors don't snip through your stitch line here but you can stitch um, snip right up focus right up to it or you can get pinking shears make quick work of it So once you get all your rounded areas, either snipped or use your pinking shears, then we're going to flip him right side out and we're going to put on his nose and his eyes. And I'm pushing on my seam all the way around in this part because I want to make sure there's no holes. This bear is stuffed uh, lightly. You're not going to pack him full of stuffing um, really tight because you want him to be kind of soft and squishy and to sit nice. It's really, really cute when he's done. Okay, so here is the bear body the front, his little face. Now you can see where we put those darts in. It gives him this little dimple up on his face. It's really cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of fold out the seam right here and decide where I want to put my nose, probably right here at this point and my eyes. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so I've got my bucket here and this is where I keep kind of all my little bear making <clears throat> supplies. I'm so sorry, I have something in my throat today. My nose is running. Uh, everything's fine out here in Minnesota, so I don't know what is going on. I'm gonna give him a bigger nose. This one, focus, camera. Where's his nose? It's a safety nose. You can get these on Amazon. Um, I can link them for you. Sometimes they take a while to get, especially if they're coming from overseas, but there are um, suppliers here in the U.S. that you can get them from uh, relatively quickly. So if you're in a hurry, order them from somewhere local. Now I'm looking for the safety back, which 
they look like. I'm going to put my hand up here again. Okay, this is what the safety back looks like. And this will be on the inside focus. Inside of the bear. So annoying. Right there. And the nose piece will go right through it. So front of the bear, back side, put that and then it doesn't come off in a baby's mouth because that's never good. All right, now pick out some eyes and you can get colored ones, you can get big eyes, you can get little beady um, bear eyes and I think that this bear, I think I'm going to go with kind of a smaller beady type eye. That's the vibe I'm getting from this bear. Yeah. And I'll get a couple of plugs for that. Sometimes I don't know what happens to all of my large ones for the noses because I swear they're not the easiest thing to get on at times. That one's going to be no problem. This one, the nose, however, the post is so big. I might just go with a different nose just to not have to... Oh, I might got one. I think this one's going to work. Oh yeah. Okay. Alright, so we got our eyes, we got our nose now. Get this out of our way. How do you put them in? Right? Now, um, like I said, the pattern had them. Where are you? Hello? Hi. Okay. Um, okay. So, the pattern had them where you could mark them, right? Um, but I am rebel. So I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm just going to look at it and go, where do I want the eyes to be on my bear? I'm going to pick my spot and I'm going to put my seam ripper through. I've got the face folded in half down the seam line. That way my eyes are even. One's not crazy. And on the... Sorry, I keep looking over at my screen because I'm trying to make sure that I'm in focus for you guys. Or that I'm in the frame at all. Because I like to say I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff and then totally be out of the picture. And that's no good for anybody. All right. So then I've got tiny, 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 tiny little hole and I push the eye through and then on the inside, there's a little plunger looking stopper. Okay. Now, since I marked it all the way through, I've got a hole over here, very tiny hole. If you make it too big, you're gonna have to go to a bigger eyeball or create a patch or something over the bear. It's not um, trashed if you did rip too big of a hole. You could make a cute little patch and it'd be like a little patched eye. I think I kind of want to do one like that for my grandson. All right, so now we got his beady little eyes on there. Don't forget to do this stuff. Stuff your bear. Then he's got no face. Um, I don't uh, put a mouth on. I don't worry about that. I've never even had anybody say anything about, hey, why doesn't this bear have a mouth? I don't get the yarn out and do any of that. So now I fold it in half again. Okay, you can see those eyes are exactly opposite each other. And I'm going to, where there's kind of this hump, that's where I'm going to put a tiny little hole right next to the seam line. Just right next to it, because I don't want to cut through it and then the seam come apart and blow a big hole. So um, I'm just going to put it next to it. Some people, when they sew them together, and you can certainly do this when you're putting the seam together, kind of how you stop. For the back opening they will um 
leave a tiny, tiny, tiny little hole right there. But to be completely honest, I forget. So this is how I've just always done it. And I'm talking like you don't really put any pressure on that seam ripper at all because if you guys work with seam rippers, which most seamstresses probably do because we're not perfect, um, it will rip a big gaping hole through your fabric right away. So I put a little hole and then I tend to just go back on the other side of it and rip it just a little bit bigger to get the big honking nose through here. And I'm going to show you if it'll focus for me. Focus. There we go. Tiny, tiny, tiny hole and lots of pressure till it pushes through. Just like that. Then I'll put that locking back on it. And there it is. Now the nose is on there. Crazy crooked. So you just twist it. So it is straight on his face. Okay. Focus on the bear. Focus on the bear. There's the nose. There's her eyes. Now the fun part. We're going to stuff the bear. So what I use, I also get this off Amazon because to be completely honest, I hate shopping. It's exhausting to me, but I'm a hell of an online shopper. So I get my polyfill big box on Amazon. They ship it prime. If you have prime, I get it like next day because uh, we have a Amazon warehouse and Minnesota and a lot of times they carry this there and I've got it the very next day. So I'm going to stuff the ears first. So I just kind of take a little, probably if I kind of squeezed it semi-tight, racquetball, it's up to you. It really doesn't matter. This is your choice, what you're going for with the bear. So I'm just going to take it and get in the picture, Kelly. And just put some filling up here in the ear. Okay, do the same thing on the other ear because this bear has two ears. Shove it up in there. Okay, some patterns. Now you could take this and you could sew right across here and make the ear kind of crimpy. I, you don't have to do that on this pattern and it turns out super, super cute. I stick bows in there, so. Now, make sure you pull your polyfill apart. Get all the little knots out of it because you want your bear to be soft and you don't want him to feel like he's been working out and has big knots all through the bear. You want him to be squishy, squishy and soft. So we're gonna Fill him out. You start to see the face. They get so cute. I'm going to keep filling this bear. Let me angle you down so you can see what I'm doing. Because I'm telling you, but I'm not showing you. And you can see the opening I left, I can get my whole hand up in here. Be careful. You don't rip your stitches because if you do, your bear, that seam will just keep on coming apart. That's uh, not good. Just pull it apart. And stuff your bear. Right now, I'm not stuffing the belly. I am stuffing the head. We're going to get the head stuffed to how we like it. Okay. And then, you don't want to overstuff, see, because if you overstuff, then this would go like that. You want to leave it crimpy so his little ears curve forward. Okay?
I think use chopsticks, stuff like that. Stuff your bear. I um have never used that because I've never had like a problem getting my hand in the opening that I leave. So. Make sure you've got no stuffing on the point of his face. Straighten out his nose. Now we're going to stuff the legs because they're the furthest away after the head. So I'm just going to take a wad. And you can see on this puppy pair, I can fit my whole hand down in here, which is awesome to really get. I kind of make the the foot um, stuffed a little stiffer, and then I go softer up in the calf of the bare leg. Guys, it's gonna be 55 degrees here. It's March. We try not to get too excited. We start to do our yard cleanup from our two crazy fat dogs, but. Um, it's uh, getting warm very fast. We usually don't try to get too excited because during basketball tournaments uh, in April, we usually kind of go by that guideline that there's one more snow coming. And there probably is. Everything will melt. We'll start to see the daylilies coming up through the ground and stuff, and then it never fails. There'll be one more snow just to throw you into the Great Snow Depression when you thought spring was here. But we're getting close. The birds are coming back. We can finally get some stuff cleaned up, air out the house. And that's always a good feeling when it's been a long winter, especially a long COVID winter. All right, so I've got that stuffed kind of just how I like that leg. It's like just a little meaty baby. All right, now we're gonna stuff the arms. Then it's the belly and then we're gonna stitch this guy up and we're gonna decorate him. Get him all personalized for this client. Sometimes I take, um, on these types of shirts, I take the collar if it's kind of like I'm going for a boy bear. Sometimes I'll ask the clients if it's, um, if it was a man or a woman in this case because of the size of the shirt. I'm assuming that it was a woman, but I don't really know. But I'm going to stick with ribbon on this one. So we'll probably put a couple ribbons in the, on the ears or in the center of the head. And a ribbon around the neck. And I usually always, always, always have a ribbon around the neck. It just kind of adds a little bit of detail. So now we got the arm stuffed. So now we're gonna stuff the belly and we want that to be really squishy. You're wondering how much fill it takes for like the papa bear, I, I, bear, papa bear, excuse me. Um, I couldn't really tell you because I've just got the big box of it, so I don't. I've never really measured it out or stuffed one and then unstuffed it to see. See any threads anywhere? Cut those. So I take it first and I stuff it in the butt. This is where we put that dart so that he sits. Don't want to overstuff it and round it out or then you're just, you make your bear hard and people want them like squishy and soft and snuggly. I'm telling you, this is probably, I've done so many bear patterns and I used to just kind of go, Ugh, I, I liked making them because I liked the end product, but I hated the patterns and 
simplicity and all that. I just, I hate having a million pieces to my bear pattern. As a matter of fact, where is that thing? I have my other pattern like hanging out around here somewhere and I probably threw it away because I know I'll never use it again after using Carol's, but okay. So once I have all my little areas filled out how I want them, I kind of pull my back together where I'm going to stitch him up and see if he's filled enough. So that his arms aren't like wing out to the side. I want him to bend. So his little arms come forward and he sits. Get in the picture, Bear. So I think that's good. So now I'm going to stitch up the back with like a ladder stitch and um, sew him up right here. And then we're going to add some ribbon around the neck and probably a cute red ribbon or something if I have any red right here in the center of his head. And then we'll notify the client that their memory bear is ready. So um, I'm going to get my thread and needle ready and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my thread. <clears throat> I just picked out a red one. Um, whatever needle you're comfortable with or that you can see to thread because that's always key, right? I've got my glasses on today, so I'm batting a thousand. Got it threaded on the first try. So I just pull off a section probably hmm, about a foot. I mean, if, like I said, this is not rocket science. Just pull yourself some off. I don't tie a knot because I'm going to tie it once it's in the bear here. So I'm going to come up probably... Um, about a quarter of an inch down from where my stitching was and I'm going to pull it through and then I'm just going to tie a knot because you're not going to see this. It's easier than trying to tie a knot in the thread and it uh, just pulling through the bear nonstop. Cut off my tail. Okay. What I do is let me try and zoom you in as close as possible. This is where that little chunk was out from the button and we put that piece in there. So that's where I was saying, don't worry about stuff like that because when we put this together, so much of that is going to be hidden that you're not going to see it. Sorry, just bump the camera. All right, so this is how I do it. I go in. And actually, I'm going to go in a little further because there's a bit of a hole here and I don't want to unstuff him. So I'm going to go, I'm going to pull the back in a bit. I'm hoping you can see that a little bit. I didn't panic because there's a little bit of a hole. I just went over further and pulled it in. Right there, pull it in. Okay, so I'm going to finish stitching this up, and then when he's all done, we'll go over to the table and we'll get ready to decorate him. Alright guys, so I just wanted to pop in here quick. That's what he looks like all sewn up on the back. Okay. There's a little bum. Alright, so let's go over to the table and decorate him. Okay, I think I found this ribbon. Oh, God, it doesn't say. 
I think I got it Hobby Lobby, like in the back in their clearance section. And it's got, oh, it's so cute. It's got little hearts on it. And this bear is red and black. So I'm going to put this ribbon on them and see if it looks cute. Um, or if I've been stumped yet again and I have to use just plain red ribbon. Yeah, I don't like it. So I have this other red that's really cute too and it's got like a glitter in it. But I don't know if the bear is for a guy or a girl, so got to keep looking for ribbon. I think I found one. But I don't have much of it. So we're um going to do a couple things. Either I'm going to decide to use the collar that I took off of the bear and put that around him and then just do a bow up on the top of his head. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. So to do that, of course, this collar is going to be way too big for the bear. So we got the bear, right? I'm gonna put the collar around him, but it fastens, if you can see this, fastens way too big. So what I do, is take my scissors, fold the collar, in half okay and cut it in half now i'm going to stitch where i need to to tighten the collar up i would rather it be tight than too loose um, and then along here where i'd cut it off the shirt i'm just going to trim that really close um, you won't see it because it'll be Hold it up underneath. And then I use, um, I'll show you here in a second when I get done cutting this. Seriously, you guys, my nose driving me crazy. Probably driving you crazy too. I use um, original tacky glue. You can use fabric glue, whatever. I will put some of that around his neck to hold this in place. Fasten it together because if you don't, you're going to do it wrong. Just trust me. So your collar is going to fold over like that. So we want... this to be sewn like that and we're just gonna go I'm gonna guess don't you don't have to guess you can measure around his neck if you want and then go a little bit smaller than that so it fits tight but I've done one or two of these so I'm just gonna guess and I'm gonna put double stitch line across right here snip that off and then we'll put it on his neck and then we'll do the bow on his head and we'll be right back Okay, if you want to make sure that you don't screw it up, just go ahead. This is what I did. Okay, sewed seam line right there. And I did not cut this off yet. So I'm just going to try it on Mr. Bear here and make sure that it fits. There we go. Then this will fold down. And we'll have a cute little collar, okay? B. 
be right back. One thing I forgot to mention that I should tell you. When you are sewing the collar together where you've cut it apart, um, sew it with wrong sides together. If you don't, then when you go to put the collar on the bear and you fold the collar back over, you will see the unfinished side of the hem instead of the finished side. So make sure you have wrong sides together when you're doing the collar like this. All right, so glue. Oh. All right, it's gotta be an easier way. Could you use hot glue? Yeah, I just don't like it. Um, this dries clear. Hot glue, um, I'll use it when I'm like in a hurry. Um, but I'm leery of it because when it hardens and it like it expands, you see it and it just, um, in my opinion, does not look as professional. So up to you. Can you use it? Yep. You can do whatever you want, but I just prefer to use this because it's going to dry soft. You're not going to feel a hard ridge of glue underneath. Oh, you dirty bear. Okay. All right. So we've got his little collar fastened. There's his collar. And it's that easy, you guys. Super, super easy. On the back, to keep that from uh, folding up, you can put um, a line of glue. Come on, camera. I need a camera person. I suck. All right. So, I'll put some glue. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Let's put that in there. Press that down. That's going to keep that collar from rolling up where your client will see the ugly stuff that you don't want them to see. Okay, now I had my iron warming up because my little piece of scrap ribbon that I found here is super wrinkly. So I'm just going to press it out so I can make a little bow for his head. I know you guys know how to iron, so I'm not putting this part on camera. Okay, so stay. Just take a piece of my ribbon, glue all over my fingers. Okay. Up to you how big you want to make the bow. I just play with it. I'm not a professional bow maker, but these bears are, they're just kind of, they're really kind of country looking and rustic, which to me um, means the less perfect they are, the more perfect they really are. hope that makes sense, but if you're a crafter or a seamstress or if you do this for business like I do um, I think you'll know what I mean all right so I just make my little bow however you want to make it cut it so it's kind of even then I'm going to glue it right in the center of the head Oh my god, glue time again. So I'm going to put a little dollop of glue right on the center of the head. You can put a pin in it if you need to, which I do. 
keep your bow from flopping over and laying flat. So I'll just take a pin and stick it straight down into the head of the bear like this. See the glue? That's all going to dry clear. You can wipe it off if you want. But it's going to be soft. It's not going to be like hot glue. I'm going to put another pin in it just on the other side to hold it evenly. I have glue on my hands so I'm trying not to touch the bear. Turn around. There I go getting glue on my bear. Okay. There you guys. Honestly. That's it. That's a memory bear with a two-piece pattern from uh, Carol Zoo. Um, the one thing, she has tons. Where are you? Hello. Okay. She has tons of patterns. She's got zebras, ponies, frogs. Oh my gosh. Um, all kinds of them. They're all two-piece patterns. You're going to have four pieces, of course, because you're going to have two for the back, two for the front. But it's a two-piece pattern. One sew. Super quick. Super easy. I'm telling you, I wish I would have found this lady's patterns a long time ago. You can buy them. Oh, God. Okay, there's more. You can buy them and either get them um, the PDF download like I do. So you get that instantly as soon as you pay. Um, or you can have her... Uh, send you it's a little bit more expensive the paper pattern if that's what you want and you can also get them in kits so let's say it's not a memory bear and you just want to make a bear or a pony or a frog or whatever there's i had a list there's like tons of them a hippo everything super super cute um you can get the kit and she's got the whole thing ready for you with fabric and everything different furs um felt um all kinds of stuff it's just really really cute but the main thing is it's easy it's a really easy pattern there's not tons of pieces so it doesn't make this difficult where anybody can do it so i'll put the link to um, her site down in the description and give it a try i mean i think it's like eight bucks or something for the pattern six eight dollars somewhere in there it's not expensive and it's super quick fun and easy and a good way to make some extra cash on the side when a lot of people are out of work. So um, until the next video, which here's a sneak peek, we're making harem pants. So I'm making these for my grandson. They are front pocket harem pants um, and they are so cute. Got the pattern on Etsy. So I'm gonna make this next with um, uh, Irish little t-shirt for St. Patrick's Day for my grandson. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.